it was, it, they were almost like tests mm -hmm. for us. And, and having those under our belt made us stronger. We realized coming out of each one of those problems, each one of those mountains that we had to climb, um, we, we realized how strong we were mm -hmm. and how um, valuable the company exactly. was. And that, yeah. that we could, that it was actually worth fighting for. Uh, no. Ooh, that's better, right, babe? Yeah! Yeah. She founded an architectural concrete company. He founded a hundred million dollar clothing company. She took the world by storm as a social media star. He took the world by storm as a famous serial entrepreneur. Together we started a business. And had babies. Now we're figuring out the best ways to do both. Join us as we learn from other entrepreneurs going through the same life struggles. As they share their life hacks about success, love, kids. And everything in between. Consider it a pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. James 1, 2, 3. Is Vosody is one of life's greatest teachers. Welcome back to the Pretty and Punk podcast. My name is Dan Caldwell, and as always, I'm here with my beautiful wife, Ildiko Ferenzi. Ildiko Forenzi. And <laughs> we have go. And uh, we have some great stuff for you today. We have another great podcast and it's something that we both have lived through. And I just think it's it's important. It's a reminder. It's things that you guys probably know deep in your heart, but it's it just needs to be said. And that's the value of hard times that we all um, you know, not everybody's gone through really hard times, but I think the people who have gone through really hard times mm -hmm. can relate to what what we're going to talk about today. Yes. And but before we jump into that, mm -hmm. hey guys, we hope you're enjoying today's episode of the Pretty and Punk podcast. And if you are, and you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button, it just takes a second. It means so much to us because it really helps the podcast get out there to more listeners like you guys. And if you know anybody it might help and you can send it to them, we really appreciate that too. We also love and appreciate your reviews. Even the babies look forward to them every day. If you share this episode on social media today, don't forget to tag us. We want to celebrate you because we know it's not easy being a parent in business. And the way that you juggle things makes you a superhero. That's worth a shout out. Together, we have a community of our personal followers as well. And we just want to put it out there. We want to show everybody that this juggle is possible. And you are our family and we're so proud and grateful to have you a part of this family so don't forget the sh all the links are below in the show notes and thank you again and let's get back to the show in my life experience the most valuable advice I had ever gotten was through the from the people that have gone through incredibly hard times and overcome them. And this is something that I will never forget. And I remember my, my mother, who's my role model, my hero, she said the same thing. And I could never understand at some point, you know, in my, in my youth, why she had such a hard life and why we were going through the things that we were going through. Why did she have to work so hard? Why did she lose her son that was incredibly, you know, perfect for our family. He wasn't a bad boy. He was a good boy. He died actually trying to put bread on the table for my mom and I. Why do these people have to go through such hard times? Well, could it quite possibly be that that those are the people that have incredible lessons for us all to learn from? Yeah, I mean, I think we not, we learned so much from the hard times, and if anybody you know who's been through these hard times knows this, is that you you get that resilience, and mm -hmm. if you don't know, it's like having dark and light that you don't understand mm -hmm. what light is if you don't have dark. 
That's right. If, if you don't have that darkness, you don't understand what, what light is about. And, That's right. you know, you, it, when they say um, uh, that, you know, diamonds are, are made from coal, from that pressure that comes mm, from... Yes, I love that. From, from, you know, that pressure on coal eventually over time creates diamonds because, you know, that pressure that comes on us through those hard times is what builds us and builds that resilience. Right. And facing and overcoming those challenges builds this mental and emotional resilience where you can lean back on that experience throughout your life. And then, you know, those scary times, you have this comfort when they come up. It's a familiar, it's a familiar thing and you're not going to lose yourself or crumble. You're going to walk in there with your armor like a warrior and handle the situation. And if you have a team, they don't, some of them have not gone through these things in business and in life. So it, you are the one that these people around you can look up to. And that's what I felt is so powerful for our community. Not only have we achieved certain things, but, you know, people that have been born with a silver spoon or have had parents that, and, and there is nothing wrong with that. It is just a different path. I, I'm so grateful that people have an easy journey. And then there's other people that have a harder journey and don't hate on that harder journey. Be grateful. Don't look at the people that have the other journey because yes, God has different plans and lessons and, um, assignments for different people and they are at different levels. He knows that if you were given challenges and hard times, listen, write it down if you need to, that if you were given those hard times and those challenges, it is only because he already knew that you could handle them. Okay. Yeah. And I I think that, you know, I almost feel sorry for people that don't that, that grow up like that, who grow up that w- with privilege, because it's, you know, I, I remember, I remember being in a place where I was in a really bad spot and I didn't have, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life and I just lost my job and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to create something, you know, start to get back on track again. And it was just really put me in a bad spot. And those hard times are, you know, where you are, where you build yourself, where you learn about yourself and you learn what you're able to, to, to deal with. And you have that hunger Yeah, that it's hard to have. I, I just, I can't even imagine being in that place where, you know, you didn't grow up like that. So you never, you never learned to have that hunger of, you know, because I think at that time, especially at that time, and even nowadays, even now, that your mind is constantly trying to create something. It's constantly trying to figure out where am I going next? What am I doing? How am I making this better? And I don't know that you have those same thoughts if you grow up in that type of privilege. And I almost feel sorry for those people, I mean, that are going through that. Well, I don't know if I personally feel sorry for them. I, I get where you're coming from. You don't feel sorry for them or you, or you don't think that you need to feel sorry? No, I don't. I don't feel sorry for them. Well, because I don't feel I sorry understand. for them. That's not what I'm saying. I just say I feel sorry uh, in the way that mean, they don't wish, have those tools. You wish that you, they could experience that. Exactly. But that's the thing. That is why you need to embrace the friends that have gone through those things because you can vicariously live through what they've gone through. I know they're not going to feel it in their core, but some people were not meant to survive that. Do you know what I mean? Like, as I said, God only chooses certain people to live a certain experience, a certain path. So I would rather see the people that are living the hard times embrace that, that, that power, you know, that power is in their purpose. And as you were saying, it's the hard times. And I was saying this before too, it's the hard times. And I guess that's where you're like, I wish they could have felt this because the hard times often require the creation 
creative solutions and that critical thinking that you have to figure out in the moment and successfully navigating this, these situations sharpen problem-solving skills, which are invaluable in achieving success. So the, I yeah, understand. You learn those I understand. skills. You learn those skills. And they say forged the in people. fire. You right, know, right. Because you're not, you're not going to learn those skills unless you're going through those mm. situations. Um, you know, it, it, you can go through, you, you can be in college and, and someone can, you know, go through the motions with you and tell you what you might be dealing with, but it's just not the same. It's not the same, but at the same time, you know, in the, in the Coliseum, and this is a totally different example, but in the Coliseum, why did so many people watch those men fight lions or whatever they were fighting in the Coliseums? Because it was so... Uh, hard to imagine. You had to see it in real life, and and you live through that. And we still have that. But then you know, I would just people say, talking it's not about the, the same way as being it, it's not the <laughs> same as, as not the being same as standing there. in there with a lion but, and and a sword and trying oh, to yeah. and you know hoping that you're going to be able to get through. Okay, this. okay, you win that one for <laughs> sure. But <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, it just I think it, okay, I believe I get it, I it get gives it. you yeah. a heads up over oh a hundred percent people yes. that are in that position but not to say because you know guys like you know donald trump he his dad was already wealthy when he was born mm-hmm. so it he hadn't ever experienced that as far as i know mm-hmm. um he hadn't experienced that so he always he had grown up in privilege mm-hmm. but he grew that beyond that so what did it take you know that's a that's a, probably a whole nother podcast you know what does right. it take and we should do a podcast on that. How do you instill so. that yeah. into your kids? Because that's such a hard thing to do. Because you want to do well, that. right? You, you know, want our kids to do don't well. have that same thing. So what are we doing right now to instill that in our kids? Why are they performing? Why the are way they, that they are? Yeah, and well, how do they get that? We have to self analyze and how you know well, how I are think, we pushing that in? I think you and I we have a lot of really intelligent friends. We have a lot of intelligent well, we put them around those people for sure. Friends and there's certain things that we do not introduce to and would not ever introduce to our children by a certain age. Hey, hey, hey. I, I thought, and this is no hate or shade on anybody because I thought I'd be breastfeeding or, or nursing for three to six months. And then there they are both till four years old because I went down the rabbit hole, hole and I learned everything that there was to learn. And there's still so much more to learn. I am always, always, and guys, always be open to learning. Don't think that you know it all and that you're the smartest in business or you're the smartest in nutrition, any of that stuff. Always be open to learning. But I think you and I have that mindset where we look at, you know, families that are falling apart or unsuccessful or their kids are glued to... um, whatever it is, they have these addiction problems at a young age. Let's face it, it's happening, okay? Let's put it out there because we all know that there's addiction happening in children with the phones or video games and stuff like that. So we have just not introduced certain things to our children. Call us mean, whatever whatever you want. It's working for our family. They're finding different things to grow their mindset, grow their intelligence, to speak differently. We ch- really challenge them yeah, I think in a we way challenge- them. I think that's a nurturing. big part of it. We're challenging them. We set a stage for them yes. and a, and a, and something for them to but live up to. But we don't ever so. force them no, to do anything. No. You know, we don't say, "Oh, she's going to be a speaker." No, he wants to be a speaker. But if that changes tomorrow, am I going to be embarrassed because he has all this um uh, what is it? The, no, I think this, we both spoke no. about that That speaking is going to help him no matter what he does. Exactly. If he decides to go be an engineer, engineer. for NASA or, you know, he's spoken or about na- that or, or whatever it is. Drive, whatever. It's we open help the door to different experiences all the time because he needs to experience different things too. Hey, let's go play baseball. No, I don't want to. Let's go play basketball. I don't want to. Okay, well, I'm not going to force you. Let's go you have a booking on a stage. Do you want to do it? Do you not want to do it? You have a choice. I want to do it. His grandmother passed away just before he had to speak in front of thousands of people. I don't, guys, I don't think I would have done it. I talked to him. I said, you don't have to do this. And he said, I want to do it for grandma. I'm going to do it for grandma. 
you know? Yeah. So it's just like you can't force anybody into an environment. You have to give them the choice in a supporting and loving way. Don't be selfish and make them. I was just listening to, uh, I can't remember. I can't, oh, gosh. <laughs> Mommy brain. Uh, I was just listening to something, but they were saying, do not, you know, selfishly push your children into your own dreams and wants because that is the most toxic thing that a parent can do. Say I was a, a ballerina dancer and I just forced my daughter to also become a ballerina dancer or entrepreneur or whatever it is. That's incredibly selfish and toxic. But expose them to everything, see where they are trying to go into, and then there's going to be all kinds of challenges and hardships, but if they really love it, they're going to come through the other side. So they don't necessarily, you know, have to have gone through hard things. Daniel and Destiny have. They've gone through, um, you know, the the they're, they're grieving. They, yeah. And all children are going to go through this. We're all going to lose our grandparents. And if we were close to them, that's something that you go through. But how do you handle those things? Because I've had loss. I think that my loss helped them go through things. It wasn't my first rodeo. And, you know, if something... Daniel's doing a bit because he wants to try all different businesses. He wants to do a lemonade stand. And, you know, yeah. you and I are like, no, no, let's maybe not do that because we know that it's not going to make the most money. But he needs to go through the, um, you know, maybe he yeah. won't make money. He wants to do that's organic okay. we, we lemonade. We need to let we, him exactly. do it so that he can experience because that's going to give him resilience what again. What he likes and doesn't like about it. <laughs> and I think that, you know, it, it, even in, when I was, I, I honestly believe we, we had so many in those first five years of building our business, there were so many pitfalls and yes. so many things that we were going yes. through. I, but I, but I honestly believe if we wouldn't have gone through that stuff, it was, it, they were almost like tests mm -hmm. for us and, and having those under our belt made us stronger. We realized coming out of each one of those problems, each one of those, um, those, those uh, mountains that we had to climb, um, we we realized how strong we were mm -hmm. and how um, valuable the company exactly. was, and that yeah. that we could that it was actually worth fighting for. And even in the beginning, when we really didn't have anything, we had nowhere to go but up. Mm -hmm. So when you're in that position of nowhere to go but up, you have to, and yeah. you've gone through these things in your life, and you're like, sometimes you're just you know, there's that PC that just wants to show people, you know, yeah. that, that show the success, I, I show get that. that you I've can do it. I've been there. I've been there, but it's kind of toxic, but I understand. It's like, you want to push so hard. You cannot, you got these eyes watching you and you cannot fail. You have to succeed and you have to be successful. You need to show It's people. a little toxic, but I understand it. I've it been there. It gives you fuel. But again, yes, it does. It gives you full but fuel, fuel, blah, 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 fuel. But back to what you were saying, people who have struggled, they appreciate their success more deeply. You know, there's that. The win is that much sweeter oh. because you appreciate it. Yeah. You know what it's like to not have bread on your table and then having the abundance. Well, you're definitely not going to be wasting the food. And you don't want to lose be... it again. So you, yes, yeah. Yes. So as you're appreciating it, like you said, with food, you know, if, if you went without food for uh, years or, you know, like a, a minimal amount of food and you were having to mm -hmm. ration your food for years, maybe because of war or whatever, you come out of that going... Um, I'm never going to run out of food again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have I'm food gonna storage <laughs> or I'm not going to waste it or whatever that is. Yeah. You put plans in place. And it's the same thing I think that you do in in any of your, it, whether it be in business or in life or in family, you know, you protect your family more sometimes when something bad has happened to you if you've yeah, gone that's through something. True. Oh, that's true. That's 100% true. Yeah. And that's what you're learning, the value of going through hard times, whatever they might be, whether that be in business or money or food or family or whatever that might be. Um, it, the people who come out of a divorce sometimes I, I've seen, I know I have friends that, you know, have uh, gone through situations 
And I've had conversations with them where they're like, wow, I'm never going to do that again. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm yeah. going to be a better person in this next relationship. And I'm, and you see it in them, you know, you see mm-hmm. that, that coming through in, in how they're in their behavior. Yeah. And they take they accountability and they truly work on themselves in order to not have a failed, a, a failed family, a failed marriage. Cause I mean, let's be honest. It is, it's a, it's a failure. It's a strike. But at that same time, it helps you become a better person you know, not coast through it. You really appreciate every single moment and you work hard to be the best mother or father for your spouse. I mean, it's for your, for your children and then being the best spouse for your, um, for your partner to lean into. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I, I, I feel that every single time that not only with my kids, because, you know, I, I have older kids too and, have you know going through that with those kids and wanting to be the best version of myself and you know this chapter of my life and trying to do not I don't want to spoil my kids but I want to give them things I want to I want to be the right father for them and so I consciously I I don't just do anything without thinking yeah we're very conscious of that I was just talking to a mom the other day I ran into a mom and it was interesting because you know some people they buy presents and they spoil their kids and I I get it I really do want to do that but I just I she was saying how it's important for her family to only do birthdays and you know Christmas and the just they appreciate their toys so much more and their belongings and they take care of stuff that's something that we do. We oh don't yeah, I mean, I, as I th- for us, it's still struggle. You know, like we say, we're only going to give our kids four presents for mm-hmm. Christmas, that but is. it's a struggle to do that. You know, it's like yeah. we see things but and we're the, like, oh, I not, really want to give them I this to, and I want to yeah, give them the, that. Right, and you got to think of yourself: is that for me, or is that some kind of guilt that I'm going through because I didn't spend enough time? Because I'm telling you that when we get our kids four presents, they are so grateful and so happy. And sometimes they don't even open the full four. <laughs> we still have a couple I think that aren't still open. Pre- there's still present over there. Yeah. From Daniel, but it's not open so yet. I'm just saying this, people, that you don't have to. Like, just really think about it because you see these videos going viral. And I, I don't even know. I guess the rooms are covered in toys and toys and toys. And the dad is so fed up that he goes in there with a shovel. He brings a giant <laughs> trash can in and yeah. they throw these things away but I'm telling you the other day my my son's always thinking of different ways to to make money to fund his speaking business I'm gonna say that again he funds his speaking business I don't pay for his coaches I don't pay for the things that go into his speaking he does okay so he said hey what's a different way that because we sell stuff online what's a different way that I can um make some money with my toys and his clothes. His clothes are beautiful and we can resell them because he takes really good care of them and his sister too. So we are, you know, setting up a little boutique where he's selling his toys and his clothes and, and that goes to fund his, um, his business. So it's really great. And then he's also gone above and beyond and said, mom, you have a bunch of stuff in storage, all your clothes. And I do, I've got tons, hundreds of pieces of Aritzia and beautiful clothing that I've had in boxes because in my acting career, I had to collect clothing or maybe this was a little bit of a excuse. I had to collect clothing because I needed to play the part in my audition of whatever I was going in for. And I had such a great wardrobe that I would suggest you can do this as an actress. You could bring in your own wardrobe because it really fits your character. And then they pay you for wearing your own clothes. So I have a lot, a lot of clothes and different kinds of clothes. So he's like, mom, can I sell some of your clothes? And he came at me in such a good way and we can split the profit. I said, sure, that's, that's a great idea. Now, you know, they don't have to deal. I don't really need those clothes anymore. I'm not deep in the acting. This is what I really want to do. I mean, if a good role comes up that fits my mindset, possibly I may do it. 
um, if a, if a shoot that works for my mindset now that I include my children in, cause they're at every shoot, everything that I do, they always come then, you know, but anyway, I just love the way that he comes at me. And I think if we were to spoil them till they're green in the face, these ideas and these things wouldn't come up. They're popping out of his idea and destiny's too. Yeah. And I, and I think we've too. set that up environment up for them yeah. so that they don't feel spoiled because yeah. we could easily spoil them because they I mean the truth is they don't have to go anybody without. honestly anybody can spoil their children toys are not yeah that yeah you don't need a lot of money to you spo- don't in today's world I mean there are some toys that are that get a little pricey but there's a whole world out there of cheap toys that you yeah. could go out there oh, and just try yeah. to appease your children by buying but them a toy. But it's dangerous, in my opinion, if you just give them everything that they want. But if you give them a way to earn things that they truly need and understanding that, hey, like the things that you don't need anymore, let's give it to someone else or sell it for someone else to enjoy. They understand that. And I was talking to Daniel the other day when we were on our way to the boutique to sell the stuff. Um, I was saying, this is so great because, you know, families have over 300,000 items in their home. And sometimes there's opportunities that come up and they don't want to leave because they have these vast wardrobes or tons of furniture and they don't want to just get up and go because it's the things that are holding them back. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, I think a lot of that teaches empathy too, you know, with him having, him seeing that, you know, him understanding that... And Destiny. He has to work for this stuff. And Yeah. yeah, both of them have to work for this stuff and she's coming to understand that better now as she gets older, but mm-hmm. he's, he understands that he has to work for this stuff. So he appreciates it and he appreciates what he's going through. And that's, and we all have to appreciate, we have to appreciate the, the hard times that we have, you know, the, or have had and, and understand that the more we appreciate those things, the mm-hmm. more going forward that we'll, that we'll, because we appreciate that, we'll work harder at the things that we're doing now. We'll, we'll appreciate the things that we have so you don't become that complainer who's complaining that I don't have this or we can't oh, do that no. or we, we're, we're too busy to do this. You know, you appreciate everything about your life and so that you don't have a reason to, to ever feel like that you are lacking or that you're that you don't have what somebody else might have you know because we can there's always going to be somebody richer there's There's always going to be somebody with more there's Mm -hmm. always going to be somebody who can travel more there's always going to be somebody who you know doesn't have kids and so Mm -hmm. that they can travel around the world and never yeah you know never have to come home and just (laughs) be on the go all the time and never have to deal with anything that has to do but there are other things that come with that when you do have a family, there's other things that you can appreciate. So if you realize the blessings that you do have yeah. and you thank God for those bre- right. blessings every day, then you realize how rich your life really mm-hmm. is. Because I know plenty of people that are, have money and are not happy people. And they're complaining. That's right. I was not. There was no complaining in our house or feeling sorry for ourselves when I was growing up. My mom, I remember or just being and and or she would but she would obviously have an a very uh, intelligent um you know explanation for everything but I was not allowed to feel sorry for myself that would just would not happen and I feel like our kids don't either they come up with solutions and he, we won't be answering the phone if Destiny or Daniel are like, I, I need some money. No, you know how to do it. I will help you, but you at this point, you know how to do it. You're good. You are good. And when we challenge them to do things on their own, and it starts small when they're little ones, but they are so incredibly proud of themselves. They want to yes, live up to that it challenge. It takes longer And it's, you know, it it takes patience. And I know that I could just do it 
um, or just, you know, give them 20 bucks or whatever. But there is just something behind the learning experience. It is something that they would not learn in school. So you got to be creative as a parent on how to hone those skills of resilience because it's not always going to be truly, you know, on the streets and during the hard times if you have a roof over your head. And, and always, again, always, again, being grateful. Once you are grateful for the little things, those other things, it doesn't matter so much. Do you have food on your plate every morning? Do you have, do you have clothing to keep you warm? Do you have a roof over do your you head? Your do health. you have heat? Do you have your health? Do you have your health? I'm t- Oh, my goodness. The worst thing... The worst thing is when you lose your health. And if you don't teach your children how to protect their health, I don't know what to say. I always remember Gary V saying one time um, a while back, it was a while ago now, but I remember him saying one time that he goes, if you ever find that I've disappeared off social media, he goes, the only reason, or disappeared for a while, or you you don't hear from me, I'm not posting every single day. It will only be because of something's happened to somebody in my family. Oh my gosh. That's, that's the, like that's what the actually only happened thing to us. That, yeah. I mean, that's that the actually only happened. Thing that really happened to that us. That will pull me out of that. Yeah. Pull I, me out of that yeah. for a minute. And I, I, it's the one thing you can't fix right away, and it will just, you know, it can take you to your knees. Oh, yeah. Our family actually went through that. And I remember people coming to me and saying, oh, you need to put this in the, you you could be on the cover for, I don't want to be on a cover for this paparazzi. Everything was coming our way because I'm not going to be the sick person. No, I'm not going to get fame from, do you know how many followers you could be getting right now? Like, this is awesome. This is a great experience. No, listen, I just want to heal and I want to be with my family and I don't need anybody's talking, thinking, doing stuff. No, no, I'm falling off the face of the planet and every moment is precious right now and I'm spending it with my family. Please stop calling. Now, I'm just, it's funny because God kind of gives you the green light of when you're ready to help other people. And it, again, it's not about, I want to be doing this for me. Now I'm in a totally different place where because I've gone through these hard things, I'm not just, hey, look at me. I'm a mom. I'm balancing it all. I'm doing it. Oh, everything's great. No, I've actually been through the stuff, just like all the other moms that I talk to out there and the dads that have been through stuff that now have something concrete that other people that are going through the things can actually trust like, yes, this woman has been through some stuff and this dad has been through some stuff. It's not just shiny and easy. And yeah, you got, you got something to, you're showing the way, you know, you can lead the way. Yes, now you're a leader. And people can, people can watch through what we do and we can help pull other people up. You know, if they're going, are you going through things? We've been there. I understand. Yes. And you have friends, you have people around you. I'm sure if you're going through anything, if there's stuff that you're dealing with, you have people around you that have been through that and you can lean into them for advice. Don't be afraid to go to people who you know and 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 have these conversations with them because yes. there's other people who've gone through this stuff that yes. you, that you're going through now. Experiencing difficulties foster empathy and compassion, allowing individuals to relate to and support others in similar situations, and that's where it is. And this can lead to stronger personal and professional relationships. Yeah, this I, is where the community grows. Yeah, this is how you lean into other people so that you can come out better on the other side. Mm-hmm. So if you guys are going through something like that, be sure you, if you have a question for us, hit us up on Instagram, uh, Pretty and Punk Podcast, at Pretty and Punk Podcast. Um, we're, uh, we would love to be able to have that conversation with you yes. and, and, and maybe give you some advice because we 
we've dealt with a lot of this stuff in our past. Yeah. And, you know, when you're building companies or you're trying to raise children and we're not perfect and we say this all the time, we're still learning as we go too. It's just, we've embraced, we've embraced the struggle as you need to embrace the struggle. Never feel sorry for yourself. It is a gift. It is because God knew that you could handle this situation because he knows you are a warrior. Look at this. I'm getting goosebumps and I'm getting emotional because I know. I know from the people that I talk to that they are going through some stuff and they keep putting one foot in front of the other even when they should be just laying down and giving up and putting out the white flag. But they just keep getting up and they keep putting one foot in front of the other. And that's what we are. That is what this community is. We're here to help each other. And, you know, even through our Instagram, giving people light and helping other people, putting them in the spotlight. I know other parents and not in our community, but I know there's other parents that are like, oh, don't talk about them. Don't give them the light because then we can't be the ones that are shining. We got to be the ones and the founders. No, it's a community. We all lift and support each other. There is no jealousy. If you are going through and creating great stuff, let me know so I can put you in the spotlight. Thank you very much because it is a hard journey. I will help you. I will hold your hand. And if you're falling, my husband and I will help lift you. We have the words of how we got up. And I'm telling you, most of it is, I mean, all of it, all of it, glory to God. I couldn't have gone through any of it without, without the help and the, the, the prayers that were going up and they were getting answered. So, you know, if, if we could be the voice through God to lift you in this moment, that's all, that's, that's everything. That's everything to us. The value of hard times, guys, there is so much value in it. If you embrace it and you go through it, you will come out better on the other side. It's a gift. It's a gift. Thank you guys for joining us for this week's Pretty and Punk podcast. And we hope to catch you guys next week. God bless you guys. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the Pretty and Punk podcast, guys. There really is value in going through hard times. You got this. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Thank you, everybody, for listening for this week's Pretty and Punk podcast. Hope to see you next week. God bless.